Okay, so now we're going to get into this box. We're going to open it up and just take a quick look inside. I want to move this along because we got a lot to cover. Opening the box. Number one. This is what is basically called like the secondary brand logo, where your main brand logo is on the outside of the box. Your secondary brand logo is on the inside. This is a sticker with very well, beautifully embossed um, metals. And uh, it's just gorgeous. Wouldn't expect anything less from Hunters and Frank Howe. Everything they distribute is fantastic, which is another point that certain distributors are of better or lesser quality. So you may get products of better or lesser quality, but this is uh, fantastic. The quality of the wood is very high end, heavy, you know, not cheap shit. Um, you have two parchment papers in here, okay? One, we're not going to pay too much attention to. These come with regional editions, all right? And you see it's got the Habanos DOP uh, logo on the corner, the distributor at the bottom, the brand logo at the top, and the cigar, size of the cigar, and a little something about the cigar in English and Spanish. So that's that. These only come in regional edition cigars. Other special releases may come with some other type of secondary uh, parchment, but standard releases do not. Standard releases and every release ever released in the world always comes with your Habanos um, Chevron. And this thing has been around since before. I don't know exactly when they started it, but it was definitely before 2005. And uh, this is a good segue for us to go right into Chevrons. I'm going to show you that very soon. Um, but this one, it comes from a period, uh, it's basically the third one. Uh, the a third update since 2005. This one falls into the category, the longest span of which it remained the same, which was from, I believe, 2007 to 2010. Uh, but we'll take a closer look at Chevron's in a minute. This is good. This is the real deal. Here you have your uh, first, uh, your piece of cedar uh, that comes in all Cuban cigar boxes, and it's got the classic half moon corner cut, very even, obviously not done uh, sloppily or, you know, that. Now, one of the biggest questions I always get and one of the first things we were confused about ever when we uploaded our first video is, can real cigars come with a piece of cedar and a corner cut? The answer is yes. And although I personally have never gotten a box with a corner cut, uh, which I guess m makes it rarer um, it's, it, you know what, because most of the boxes I get are regional editions and special cigars. I do get a few. I got a, par a box of Partagas D4s right over there. It also has the corner cut. But as of lately, and this, it, may be tr it may have been true in the past that all Cuban cigars had a corner cut. But as of lately, real cigar boxes do come with cedar sheets that have the 45 degree diagonal cut. And uh, I've got quite a few reputable sources that have backed me up on that. Um, there was uh, one viewer who said, I forget the exact video, I'll, I'll try to look it up. It was a video, on a guy was doing a documentary on Cuban cigars, and at, he, he gave me the exact time frame and everything in the video while in the Cuban cigar factory. In the background, you can see a stack of these cedar uh, sheets with 45 degree cuts. So that right there said, hey, look, that's that. But again, this really depends on who's distributing it, who's making it, which factory is making it, what region it is, uh, it's for, depends on a lot of different things. But nowadays, especially recently, my best friend got a box of Monte Cristo number twos, which were fantastic. Everything was great. Uh, everything checked out. The only discrepancy was that 45 degree cut, but those turned out to be real. Um, so that's that. Under that, you have your uh, parchment, which lays over the cigars to protect them. Uh, it's uh, wax paper, okay, and then of course you have your cigars. When you look at your cigars, first thing for me always is smell, okay? And these smell absolutely delicious. They're aging really well. Um, probably can't see it on this camera here, but if you were, let me put them down and zoom in, you'll see it better. If you were to uh, look really closely, there is plume, which is not mold, it's a crystalline kind of substance. These bands here uh, are very, very, very well embossed, okay? The cigars themselves, what you want to look at, beside, of course, the aroma, 
is that they are all of equal length, okay? All of approximately equal length. Some of them at the, hold on, I gotta push them down. Some at the bottom are, there's a little space in the box, so, you know, they don't look, but anyway, that's that. Uh, and of course, the triple caps, the caps are more flat than they are round. The bands, uh, this is this was a very special release. It's one of the, I think it's the only release that used this type of LaGloria band. And um, where the new LaGloria bands that are on like the Baylux regional release, the Swiss regional release, it's a band that mimics almost completely the old band except it's very well embossed and it says uh, Habana Cuba instead of just Habana like the old bands. But this band, I forget exactly what they based it on, uh, is very unique, very, very unique. So the chance that these cigars are counterfeit is almost nil because they would have to make a brand new band that's never ever been produced before uh, at, you know, uh, the time frame and forget it, they're real. Uh, and then you have your secondary uh, regional edition bands, uh, Reynos Unido. Reynos Unido. Okay, so this is great. That's all I want to show you on that box. We're pretty much done with that. I'm just gonna cover this up real quick. And we are gonna move on. Uh, and th that pretty much covers all the points of the things we already knew uh, that we learned from the older videos. Uh, and it also takes care of the question, can my cigars come with a straight cedar cut? Uh, the answer is yes. So, okay, welcome that. back to the Let Dr. Joe Show. Uh, I hope you're up to par with everything we just went over on the last box. It pretty much touched base on very quickly on everything we know about uh, spotting a fake box um, from our past episodes, including some minor updates. And uh, now I want to show you another box. I chose this box specifically because of its date. And uh, we've seen this before on the show, but not in the context of looking at it for being real or not. We just looked at it as a review of the uh, regional edition. This box is uh, 2010, all right, June 2010. So you're looking at mid-2010. And uh, there are a few, well, two major differences. Number one, the Habano seal now has changed and includes the D.O.P uh, initials after the Habano logo, okay? We're gonna take a closer look at those uh, in a minute on the computer. Uh, there are three different types I want to show you. The second big difference is the government seal. Now, this government seal uh, covers years from 2009 to 2010, uh, but does run into 2011. And during all of those years, uh, it can be overlapped with the old seal. Less likely during 2011, but from 2009 to 2010, Many, 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 many times, you'll see this seal overlap with the old seal. Let's take a closer look at what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is our box of Pearl Aranyaga's close up. And uh, I just want to point out to you what I was just talking about. The Habanos SA seal. This came into play late 2008. So you see boxes that from 2008 with this and without. There's always a little bit of confusion when there's changeovers. But it's important that you know your dates. Uh, if you see this on a box from 2005, you know it's bullshit. If you see the old one without the initials on a box from 2010, you know, or even 2009, you know it's bullshit. This one was changed over pretty quickly, okay? And uh, late 2008 till present. This is still the one they're using, uh, and the only difference, the big, well, maybe some size differences, but the biggest difference from the older one is the DOP initials, which really is just a, another ch little change to help thwart every, uh, in, in conjunction with everything else, because obviously it's not that hard to just add those little initials um, to, their, to their bands and stuff that they sell online, and you'll see that later. You won't believe it if you haven't seen it already. We're going to do a little update on uh, who I affectionately call Mr. Nutsack. One of my viewers thinks that's hilarious. I do too. And uh, the second big difference, the newer seal. This is not the most 
recent seal and here's where a lot of confusion comes in uh, this seal looks in in most aspects identical to the one they're using currently it, it is the year 2014 right now this seal uh, was used mainly from 2009 to 2010 uh, and you will see uh, a lot of the time that it overlaps the old older seal that they while they got rid of those now Number one, here's what I was talking about shield placement. You'll notice this shield is not bent in the middle. The shield on the old band is, you can see the old band under there, right over there, but the shield on the new band is not. Not important anymore. It's just not important right now. This is a 100%, 100%, 100,000%, no question about it, a real genuine box of Cuban cigars. And the shield is not bent in the middle. So, and this happens in a lot of cases, okay? Now, you have to be you have to be honest with yourself. You have to tell yourself now on older boxes it was always, nowadays not so important. And you got to tell yourself, look, if these MFers are copying holograms and and tax stamps and and everything you see on this box, they're not going to make the stupid mistake of not putting it in the right place, all right? They might on a low quality counterfeit, but let's say this was a counterfeit. You're not going to see a counterfeit of this quality with the shield in the wrong place. All right. So you got to like, you got to, you know, talk to yourself and say, okay, the shield's not bent in the middle, but I mean, holy crap, it's got everything, including our serial number. So it's, it's fucking real. Okay. Um, and that's that. This band that came out, the upgrades from the old band were tremendous, but again, it wasn't so much that it stopped the counterfeiters dead in their tracks. Counterfeiters quickly found a way to uh, create their holograms, and uh, the biggest problem was this. What was really supposed to stop counterfeiters dead were these new serial numbers, okay? Right over here, that you can look up on the Habanos SA website for verification of authenticity. Problem is, 9 out of 10 vendors cut those numbers off, okay? The story is that this number can be used to track uh, directly back to the vendor which vendor sold the box and shipped it to where it shouldn't have been shipped, and that vendor can get in a lot of trouble for doing that. And the truth of the matter is, that is true. The problem is counterfeiters took advantage of this, but it is true. Because what will happen is, first of all, the United States is not the only problem. Vendors have very strict guidelines of what cigars they get and where they're allowed to sell those cigars. If they get caught shipping cigars out of their area of authenticity, their authorized area, Habanos SA can come down and revoke their license to sell Cuban cigars. Okay? It's a very serious operation. It's really not like it is in the United States where, you know, you collaborate with a certain cigar dealer, say, I don't know, anybody, say Davidoff. And, you know, you get their cigars, and you, now you, you're allowed to sh sell them anywhere, worldwide. You can ship them to any country you want, do whatever you want with them. So, it's very different. And vendors, uh, you know, being that they don't want to lose their business over a box of cigars, will cut those off. However, once a vendor gets to know you and trust you, and know that you're the real deal, and know that nine of the packages he sent to your house got to your house, uh... He'll say, you know what, I'm just going to, you know, I'm not going to bother waste my time. I'm just going to leave these on. So that happened a lot too. So in a few minutes, I'm going to show you something that's just going to blow your mind. Uh, and because what we've been talking about is the uh, serial numbers over here on the box that vendors cut off. And uh, they do it for a legitimate reason. The problem is counterfeiters know that. And so they do it as counterfeit vendors and say that's why they're doing it. When the truth is, is they don't have a fucking serial number. These can be copied, and they are copied, believe it or not, uh, hologram and all. Um, but I'm going to show you something that makes cutting off the serial number in this day and age completely futile. Completely futile. The entire thing is dead. Vendors are still cutting them off, but it doesn't fucking matter. It's dead. And I haven't seen many places in, online that uh, give you this information that I'm about to give you, so it may come as a surprise to a lot of you. Uh, anyway... This band, remember, boxes from 2009, 2010, and this band will overlap the older band. The older band, the highest the older band goes is first letter J. Anything higher than that is bullshit. 
Uh, another point I forgot to make, there is no known serial number C. Uh, so if you get a box with a C on it, which would be a box from a long time ago, a vintage box, and therefore you probably would pay good money for it, C is bullshit. There's no such thing as C. Um, and that's about it for this box. I will show you the newest box, which will show the few differences and the, the grand, the coup, the coup de la, the creme de la creme, the coup de la ta, I don't know what to even call it, um, coming up uh, on the newest band. So, let's uh, take a little trip over to the computer real quick um, and look at a few things.